this Flash and ActionScript 3 tutorial, we demonstrate how to utilize the radio button components from the components library here to program forms and quizzes and tests and whatever you need and your submit question or submit answer button will show and we have conditionals set and show you how to program conditionals to show whether the answer is true or not. So if they press flash, which is the correct answer, it says flash is correct, well done. And if the others will say that selection is incorrect. And we show you how to access the value of what the user chose. That way you can send it to a database or yourself an email, whatever you have to use it for when you're gathering information. And this source file will be available free at developphp.com in the flash tab. Let's click Create New Flash File Action Script 3 because we're working with AS3 here. I'm going to adjust my size properties of my file to 550 wide and 300 high. That's as large as I need it for this demo. I'm going to grab out the text tool and type in a static text field. It's going to be my question for my little quiz or my form question and then I'm going to go into the components library and grab out the radio button component and also a button component on the button the parameters I'm going to change that label to submit or submit answer Okay, let's bring that down a little because we want four choices. So now we're going to grab this radio button, press Control C, Control V to copy and paste in place. Drag it down just a little, and get them sort of close together. That looks good. Grab both of those, Control C, Control Shift V. And slide those down into place using your arrow keys to make sure that it's even with the others. There we go. And now what we're going to do is give these instance names RB1 for radio button 1, RB2 for radio button 2, RB3 for radio button 3, and RB4 representing radio button 4. The submit button is going to get an instance name of submit underscore btn. Let's put it right about there. Now we need a text field. It's going to be dynamic text because this is going to show the the person the uh, the status of their answer, whether it's correct or not and in this field we'll show you how to access the property or the item selection that they chose if you were using this in a form type situation so you can send it to yourself in an email or send it to a database or whatever you're doing with it you can access that value of what they chose okay so let's name this status underscore txt let's rename this layer stage elements Now we have instance names for all of the items we're going to be talking to in the code or be communicating with in the code and we can now code this out. That has instance name and these all have a different instance name. Alright, now let's create a new layer. Call it AS3 for ActionScript 3 and let's do some code. Okay, let's highlight our ActionScript 3 layer there with that keyframe. Press F9 to open our Actions panel where we're going to type in the code. First thing we're going to do is import the necessary uh, controls for the radio grouping, the radio button grouping. Dot controls. Dot radio button group okay now we're going to claim a variable 
that's going to be this radio button group object and name so we'll go radio let's see let's just name it radio group one radio group one colon radio group radio button group equals new radio button group and let's put the name this radio button group right here which is going to be question one all right now we have the radio button group all set up so let's place labels on those radio buttons here so each radio button we don't want it to say label we want to give it the actual label of that choice so let's say RB1 dot label is equal to let's make the first one after effects but there'll be after effects just copy that line make one two three more this one is RB2 this one is RB3 these are the instance names we gave our radio buttons remember and this label for number two is going to be Dreamweaver the label for three is going to be Flash which is the correct answer for this question and the last one will say Fireworks now, now that they all have labels let's see what happens if we press control and enter see there's my question and now these all have the correct labels okay now we can type in for that submit button submit underscore btn dot add event listener this is going to be for when the user clicks that submit answer button event dot click and the function we want to fire off will name submit click close that up now we'll type in that function function submit click Oops. submit click is event colon mouse event void open curly brace and close the curly brace and there's our submit click function nest all set up nice now what we're going to do is have a couple of if and else condition statements to check to see their answer is if to check <laughs> sorry <laughs> to check and see whether their answer is correct or not okay so within our if and else conditions we're gonna be looking for these this radio group ones selected items label so in order to get to the labels and have these radio group buttons be part of this radio group one we have to assign that in the code so or you can do it in the parameters of the the uh, radio group buttons themselves but we're just going to show you how to do it through code rb1 dot group is equal to radio group one and you do that for all four buttons so we can just take that one two three all of them are radio group one so rb2 is in radio group one rb3 is in radio group one and radio group button four or radio button four is in radio group one so that's how you group them all together into one group and you can have many on the page at one time and now let's put in that if condition if that's where the condition will be open the curly brace close curly brace else open curly brace close close curly brace now we have 
a nice nested if and else condition statement ready to go. Now let's put the condition in. The condition is going to be if radio group one if radio group one dot selection dot label is equal to flash, which is the correct answer, then we're going to put something in the status text field. And that something is going to be equal to it's going to be equal to this the label so you just say radio group one the selection that label which would be flash in this condition plus I'm just going to add to this line and say space is correct so the output of that say well done so the output of this would be flash is correct well done and the reason why it would say flash is correct well done because you right here you're printing out the accessing the value of what they chose you're printing it to that line so now we'll just say else because if it doesn't equal flash that means the, their answer is wrong so we say is incorrect try again that's it hey I just needed to splice in this little code edit here and what I did on the submit click function inside of it before we ran the normal if and else condition to see if the question is right or not I put in an if statement to see if the radio group one selection equals null that means in your little form if you want to make it to where not none of these are selected by default like we have here and if they click submit answer nothing happens now watch if I didn't have that code let's edit that out and now press control enter you'll see if I press submit answer I get a big fat error a null object reference cannot access the property so you have to have that code in there if you wish to make your radio button group not have any selected by default but if you wanted one selected by default you just say right here rv1 dot selected equals true and then you really wouldn't need this because we wouldn't get any errors there because one would be selected watch see after effects is select it's selected already we click submit answer so you see how that all works I felt I should explain that but we want to make ours with none selected by default so we're gonna use this little if statement there okay